Hello, people of YouTube and the internet. This is Jackson from God Guns and Guitars coming at you live from the Armory. And what do we have here today? Well, on the bench, we have a plethora of gear. Uh, definitely a lot of magazines, and uh, we have a rifle, a pistol, and ammunition, and also a little bag of accessories, all pertaining to 22 long rifle. Um, why is all this stuff out here? Well, it's out here because I have everything that you see on this mat, on this bench, pretty much from here over, not this 226, that's that's here for other purposes. But uh, anyway, we have uh, everything that's on this table for the most part goes together and what I put together as a package, a basic setup package for a survival gun, a survival rifle and pistol combination, uh, all together in a bag that, ironic enough, this 1022 tactical takedown comes in. Uh, this is just how I have my bag set up and why I think it's a great uh, package to be thrown together. And uh, some of the gear that I use and recommend running with this package and, and why I choose it over some of the other stuff. So we'll just get started and dive right in. We're going to start with these magazines. Uh, everything I have here, magazine-wise, are Ruger branded magazines. Now, interesting enough, we have six of the BX25 magazines by Ruger. And um, these things are, I, I love these magazines. I think these are probably the best 25 round banana style magazines that you can get for a 1022. I have not had an issue with any of these Ruger branded magazines that weren't attributed to user error or just carelessness on my part to clean the magazines, which is funny because of how easy it is to clean these things. Uh, all of them are loaded. I carry uh, CCI mini mags inside of my magazines, uh, my standard magazines anyway, just to uh, get started. But if you ever have a problem and want to clean these things uh, and don't have an ultrasonic or don't feel like taking your magazine apart, cool thing about these guys you put them in your dishwasher of course make sure they're unloaded before you do that but uh, yeah you can just toss them in the dishwasher and it'll clean them for you cool enough but uh, I also have some 15 rounders here they're pretty self-explanatory same as the uh, 25 rounders but just of course 15 rounds um, next we have these BX 25 times 2 uh, magazines, which they're very interesting. Um, all they are are just two 25-round magazines, but they're molded together. So in a way, it's a 50-round, but it shoots 25 at a time. They're just molded together upside down, and they come with these little sleeve protectors for the lower end, or the lower end of the magazine. And the theory is, of course, you shoot your 25 rounds, you run out of ammunition, you release the magazine, spin it upside down, and of course, then you got 25 more. Away you go. But uh, carry two of those, of course. We got six of the BX25 ma uh, magazines. We have two of the 15 uh, BX15s, and then two of the BX25 times twos. And then, of course, which comes stock with every one of your 1022s that are sold for the most part, you have your standard BX25, or excuse me, your BX10 round magazine. But um, they pretty much come with any 1022 you get, with the exception of if you get some sort of exclusive package or something. Sometimes I've seen them shipped with uh, your 25 rounders, and in some cases even a 15. But um, you will, 9 times out of 10, get a 10-round magazine with your 1022. But, uh, I also have two extra magazines for this pistol over here. This is a SR-22 pistol. Very, very good gun. Uh, very similar to a Walder P22. Uh, definitely designed off of the P22. A couple added features. It's a, now a lot easier to disassemble. Uh, it's a little bit more ergonomically friendly, which is surprising um, that we beat the Germans on that. Not that Ruger isn't, uh, Sturm Ruger isn't a German company. They are U.S. made, and they are, of course, um, design in the US as well but uh, yeah they, they're 10 round magazines you can mod the magazines to fit more rounds in them but these things are just really cool the thing's super accurate and on this one the safety acts as a decocker which I really dig so that's that's just kind of a cool factor you get a dead trigger if you don't have your safety on and then you also have a dead trigger um, 
which, which stays dead if you don't have the magazine in the gun, which some people don't like, some people do like, but cool factor, uh, if you're just training somebody to shoot, this is a great little pistol to do so, and it's extremely accurate, just like the Walther, it is a fixed barreled gun. Um, then we have this little bag of accessories, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, and then I have some standard uh, velocity ammunition, uh, in case I, of course, run out of mini mags and everything that you see here. The pistol's loaded with mini mags, extra magazines or mini mags, and of course all my 1022 mags have uh, CCI mini mags in them. But I also have uh, some higher velocity stuff, as well as the standard velocity. We have uh, CCI stingers. These guys are uh, hollow points that are nickel plated, or uh, nickel cased, I should say. Not that it really matters much with a rim fire, but that is cool uh, factor, of course, if you're dealing with uh, humid environments or have to worry about your, your brass corroding, nickel won't do that as badly. But uh, these guys are running 1,640 feet per second, so these guys are really trucking and uh, more of a varmint round, of course, they're 32 grains, unlike every other round I have in here, which is a 40 grain projectile. So then we get into, of course, the impiste le resistance. This guy is, uh, of course, a tactical 1022 takedown. Um, this one is a 50 year anniversary. I do have it scoped. I do not have the ability to use my iron sights, but uh, the scope that I have on here is really, really interesting. It is a uh, P22 scope by Nikon, and uh, this one is, or has, I should say, tactical turrets, which, cool enough, um, I can actually adjust these guys for my yardage. I have it set at 50 yards, and I'll get into the tactical turrets in a minute as far as how easy they are to manipulate and what exactly they do. So we'll get into that then. Okay, everyone, we cleared some space on the bench so we could focus a little bit more on the rifle. And uh, real quick, I just want to demonstrate how to break one of these guys down. Uh, it's extremely simple. All you got to do is you're going to lock your bolt to the rear. Once that is done, you are going to take this little lever on the bottom of the barrel and you're going to pull it in the direction of the muzzle. So you are going to pull and twist. That simple. Comes right apart. Okay, now let's uh, focus on the barrel. Well, this is a tactical takedown, so we do have a muzzle break on the end of this, which, as we all know, is absolutely useless in 22 long rifle, but cool enough. I mean, you could throw it on an AR or a build if you wanted to uh, do that. Just make sure it's designated for a 22 caliber whenever you put it on. Um, but this is basically from the factory an overglorified thread protector. Um, again, it really serves no purpose on a 22 long rifle, but if you have your tax stamp, of course, you could throw a suppressor on it. Um, you could throw a compensator on it. You could do whatever you want. You have threads underneath here, so world is your oyster, right? Anyway, so you also have a Laser Max 1022 laser. Now, this guy I put on aftermarket. Um, it is extremely bright. I was really, really happy with it. And uh, one thing to note, these guys are sighted in mandatory at 25 yards at the factory. They recommend that you don't play with it too much and just kind of leave it at 25 yards. You can take it out to 50. You can do whatever you want with it. But um, that, that's pretty much what I have this one set for, as is set right at 25 yards. Um, also on here, you do have Picatinny rails, so you would have the ability to put something on either side here, which uh, because these rails are made out of plastic, I don't recommend putting anything attributed to accuracy on here. Um, but if you wanted to put a light uh, of any type on here, you know, or any t sort of like side mount or side accessory that, you know, wouldn't do anything for accuracy, that's, I think, what I would use this for if I put anything on the sides here. But, you know, that's just a cool factor to have in that on both sides. Other than that, we have the Nikon scope, which we mentioned earlier. Now we're going to try to focus a little bit more in on that, which, let's see if we can't get a little bit closer here. Okay, so we have the scope now standing. I had to reposition the camera. Uh, the rifle's just kind of sitting upward, so I'm trying not to bump the table at all. But uh, let's take a look at some of these turrets. Now, on that, if I can get it to focus, these tactical turrets are rated for different velocities. 
And uh, the reason I say turrets is because I actually have more in this bag of goodies that I have here, uh, which what I do carry this with all the accessories uh, for the rifle and the pistol. I have various tools to take the gun apart in here. I have extra batteries for the laser, and I also have some extra turrets. Uh, the one in here is, if I can get it to focus, is rated for 1,500 feet per second to 1,640 feet per second. So if you're using different velocity ammunition, of course, you can take it a little bit further um, with that turret, and it'll be just as accurate as if you're shooting some of the low velocity stuff with this turret which this guy is designated for 1200 feet per second to 1300 feet per second and uh, one click uh, for each of these turrets equals a quarter inch at 50 yards so that's something to note the most uh, scopes are designated one clip is a quarter inch at 100 yards these guys are for 50. Now, let's take a look at the tactical. What's so tactical about uh, these turrets? You know, what's the tactical aspect? Uh, these guys, I have mine set at 50 yards, and uh, if I wanted to say go to 100 yards, all I'd have to do is bend this guy and hear it click all the way to 100. Now, it will be on at 100 yards, and as crazy as that sounds, it actually is dead on accurate. I did not expect to be able to hit steel plates or six inch steel plates at 100 yards you know with this thing really just being you know fairly on at 50 yards i didn't expect it to be that perfect you know these turrets really 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 are worth it and worth the extra money uh, from paying for the scope uh, they do go all the way to 150 yards which um of course I don't need to take a 22 long rifle out that far, but you do have the option of doing so, which is cool. Of course, I'm going to set mine back to 50, but the other neat thing is if I wanted to change this and have it set for 100, or say I wanted to sight it in at 100, I could set my turret there, of course, and sight it in where it's dead on at 100 and lift up and spin, and it's not going to affect the actual settings of this scope so say i'm at 50 yards and it's not on at like 100 or 75 or so say i want to shoot it in for 75 so i get it sighted in at 75 i simply pull up on the turret turn it and set it down and now i'm on 75. say and now i want to shoot at 50 yards i just spin it to the 50 yard mark Interesting how, how, how accurate this thing is. Uh, for the money, I think I paid 150-ish bucks for this scope. Now, uh, that was a while ago. I'm not sure if this one is still in production. This is the P22 scope by Nikon, but they, they have done some various things to change uh, the, the name of some of their scopes, and it's basically the same thing with better glass. So they discontinue a lot of old models and then bring them back. But um, that's, that's the tactical turrets anyway. Okay, everyone, just to kind of reference what we were talking about earlier by a basic package setup is uh, whenever you buy one of these 1022 takedown rifles, they come 99.9% .9 of the time in these tactical style bags, which uh, you could fit a lot of gear on. In fact, everything that I had on this bench earlier is currently inside of this bag, and that is a lot of excess gear. Uh, and I mean everything magazines pistols in the top pouch uh, you got six of the BX 25 rounders in here and then of course if you open it up you have uh, my barrel in here you got your um, magazines and then also the receiver with a scope on it in the um, larger pouch uh, which not all scopes will fit in this bag uh, on the rifle you do have to find and play around a little bit with the science of that of what you can fit on your lower receiver to make it still fit in this bag but you definitely still can uh, fit a scoped receiver inside of the bag this is obviously proof but uh, as always it pretty much concludes today's video of backpack and survival guns and stuff like that I highly recommend if you don't have one of these things get one because they're super fun they're really accurate and you can use them for just about any purpose known to man uh, like I said mine's pretty much a trunk gun and, and you know a SHTF scenario gun and uh, awesome survival rifle but 
As always, like and subscribe. Uh, love to hear your comments. And, of course, as always, long live this country. Long live our republic. And in the name of Ronnie James Dio and Ruger Rifles, long live rock and roll. All right, guys. Thanks again. God bless.